Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This is my SharePoint questions. Uh, last time I got a few uh, questions on my chart power app, so I just wanted to kind of answer some of those, walk through some of those scenarios. Uh, the first question was, how do I display two lines on the line chart? And then also, uh, someone wanted to know how to round the numbers when they go into the data table. So the first thing I want to show you is how to round the price when it's entered. So right now when we submit, we're actually submitting a collection. In the collection, we want this price to be rounded. So you can just use the round function. Although you, you notice the round function is not actually going to work with a text value. What you need to do is make it realize that this is actually a number. So this text value is actually a number and then how many decimal places do we want to round by? We can round by two if we wanted or one say this was a price, you know, two decimal places will be nice. So if we play and we put in a number, now our price is rounded. And you know, you can do round down, round up, but right now this is just basic round functions. So if it's by a five, it's going to round up. If it's by four, it's going to round down. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove those. So that's the easy way to round a number in Power Apps. You need to do it while you're gathering the data. Alright, so next up is I want to show you how to display two lines on this line chart. So what I'm going to do is make two prices. So I want another text input. This one's going to be here. Text price two. All right, and I'm going to put another little label here too. I'm just going to call this one price two. All right, so I have a price and a price two. So we're going to have prices on every date. So that's kind of nice for this stocks chart. So when we submit, what I'd actually like to do is add another variable called price2. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to round it by two decimal places. So now in my collection I'm actually collecting two values. I'm collecting a price 1 and a price 2. So I'm going to go ahead and type in, uh, let's do this one, 3.3 so now in our data set we're collecting two values. So if I were to submit, and you'll notice that my collection actually is all messed up now on my line chart. Let me go to my chart here. So you'll see here I have date and I'm going to want price one and price two. In order for this to work it has to know that there's a number of series. So we can actually do that here just so you can see it better. Number of series. Let's change that to two. And when we test this out, we have uh, some data in the price one and price two. You'll notice now we have two data sets. And let's go ahead and do another line. And you'll see that we have two data sets now in our line charts. So let me see if I can make them intersect just for demonstration purposes. There we go. So now we have two line sets in our data. But the first thing we want to do once we have two lines is we want to differentiate between the two lines. So I'm going to go into my chart. I'm going to go into the color set. I'm just going to change the first value here. So now that one's orange and this one is green. So we can see the two differences between the data sets. Now that's pretty easy. So now that we have our two series, I want to give the user control to whether we want to show one or two series. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a drop down here. And this drop down is going to be either in the items I'm going to change it to either one or two. So either one or two. So now we have two options in here. We have one or two. I'm going to go ahead and rename it just for demonstration purposes. Let me train it. Drop series. So in my chart, when I select my chart again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Advanced, 
and then the number of series. So I can actually do it up here. You can see it set as two. What I want to do is change it to drop series dot selected dot value. That way now I have a drop down where I can show one or two series. <clears throat> Isn't that neat? Oh, you're giving the control right back to the user. Um, but now the next problem is, is price two is actually showing up. We want price two to only be visible if the series is greater is equal to two, right? So visible, it's true. So if if drop series dot uh, selected dot value is equal to two, then true. Else it's false. And I'm going to do the same thing for the button. Actually, before I do that, the, the best way actually to do this is, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to say true. And then I'm going to select all three of these pieces. So I selected price to the text and the button. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit control G. Control G on my left side turned it into a group. And I'm going to rename this to series two. So on the left side, you can see here my series two. I can control all three of these visibility properties now. And I'm just going to copy paste that right back in. So now you notice all three of those pieces are now gone. And I can bring them back, bring them forward. Isn't that neat? And so if you guys really wanted me to, you know, I could show you how to do series three, series four, and we could keep on going. Um, I'm just going to call this, I don't know, this is just on the top of my head, GME and Tesla. I mean, I know these numbers don't match, but uh, that's our chart name. So now I just wanted to pull in my last video and pull this into here. Um, I think the it, this looks really blank, right? It just looks so basic. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in a HTML text. Now my HTML text, I, I love to do this. I love to make colors. So I have prepared for you a HTML color input that I'm going to put right behind this chart. And so now that I have my HTML text, I'm going to come up to the property of the HTML text. I'm just going to paste. I've already prepared this for myself. I actually have a linear gradient and it's going from a white to a little bit of a gray and then to a light blue. And so I'm going to pull this HTML text and I'm going to reorder it to the back. Now my chart actually has some color behind it. Uh, we can see the different uh, points. And then finally, what's the next thing I want to be able to do? Well, I want to be able to print this. So this is the new feature that uh, that Microsoft has recently added, and that's to print. So now I can come into this button on select, print, rename it print. Maybe I'll give it a different color and so, so it's not just so basic. So now I have my new chart. I could make certain things go visible, invisible when I hit the print button, but just for these demonstration purposes, I can hit print. Now I can print straight to PDF. I have my chart. We could make it a landscape so it fits just right. And oh, man, Microsoft Power Apps is moving on up. Look at that. We have our line chart intersection across different dates, and you can print straight to PF, PDF, give it to your boss. No need for Power BI, no need for Excel. We can create an app, give the controls back to the users and let them print how they want. Thanks for watching. I know this was a short one, but I just wanted to build on my last um, video. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoy these videos, if they're helping you, giving you ideas, please subscribe. Uh, thanks so much.